Hi, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, I'm going to show how you can align a tripod shot using a existing mesh that you have that represents something that you can see in the scene. Now, you can align tripod shots a number of different ways using alignment lines or trackers as well. This is just one particular method in the situation where you do have a mesh for something that you can see. So here's our shot. It's a uh, 4K shot from a GH4. And you can just see we start out looking off into the distance, and then we wind up looking at this little spring house here. So what we're going to do is first off mark that it's a uh, tripod shot, and we're going to have it do an auto track on it. Again, this is a 4K shot, so it takes a little bit of time here rather than whipping through it instantly as it might otherwise. So now we have our initial solve. So of course it's a uh, tripod shot, so it's, it's pretty straightforward. Now one thing I'll point out, if you look up here at the R, you'll see that it's fairly high. And that has to do with the GH4 and especially running in that full 4K mode. So if I drop in a little magic number here into the rolling shutter compensation, and now we resolve, you'll see all of a sudden the error is a whole lot lower. And if we go, we can uh, turn on the tracker cleanup. Now we're just down to one bad tracker. We'll take that out. Now we're down to a quite nice error. And, you know, the lesson from this is that with many of these cameras, rolling shutter is a very, very real effect. And to be honest, it, it makes processing the shot subsequently more difficult. You know, here I've corrected for it, but to really do this right, to fully match this up, my render would have to match that rolling shutter as well. So that's kind of out of the scope of this particular discussion. I just wanted to show you what a drastic effect it can have on the error value. So moving along, we're going to take our world size and we're going to make that much larger just because the overall distance from the camera is high compared to the overall scene. And that has the effect that our trackers look big. So let's just go and knock those guys back down to little tiny size. So, you know, here's again is our shot solved. And we're going to start working on the model now. And this was generated from a preliminary tutorial that's separate. So I'm just going to bring that in. And actually, let's go to a quad perspective view. So here's our model. It's actually facing off into the distance. So the first thing we're going to do is just spin this guy a bit so that it's lined up this way. It's just an aesthetic concern, if you like. What we're going to do next is get the camera into a more reasonable uh, general location so that the, the model is lined up at, at least a little bit in the general vicinity of the, uh, the mesh there. So let's just go to the end of their shot. And I'm going to turn on the whole box there, which says that now I can start moving the entire camera. And one thing you'll see right now, we're moving actually the mesh too. And that makes sense except when we want to do this particular kind of task. And now we don't want to do that. So we turn off the whole effects mesh checkbox there, which, which shows up in the perspective view, right-click menu as well. So now you see the mesh is being left behind. And we can just go and move this around. So now you see our wireframe there. Let's just go and I'm turning off 
the lighting on the wireframes there on that right click menu. Sorry, that goes out of the bottom of the capture window. So I've got this lined up. So it's at least roughly similar to the real world here. And that, that has two benefits. One is that the pin tool that we're going to use you know, looks for nearby sorts of solutions to what the situation already is so it doesn't go and do something crazy. So we want to get kind of in the right general ballpark. And the second thing is we want to expose the sides of our mesh that correspond to what we're seeing in the image so that we can do the pinning part uh, relatively straightforwardly. So let's go over to the geometric hierarchy panel there and open up the, oops, it's not the one that I want though, I want this pinning toolbar. I'll point actually, I could just do this from the, uh, the right click menu as well. But let's go and we want to select our mesh and now we're going to change this where it says pin the mesh, we're going to change it not to the camera but the whole scene. And the difference between the camera and the whole scene is the pin the camera changes it just on the current frame. When I select this pin the whole scene option, it means the entire scene over all frames is going to be adjusted. So we're going to turn on the create pins mode and start moving it around. And as I do that, you see that the whole camera scene over there is moving as well. So I'm just going to, you know, in particular it's moving further away. But let's just go to the perspective view so we can actually do this. And we'll even zoom in a bit. So I'm just going to go around and start lining up pins so that the mesh matches up with the actual object. You can see that as you go through this, you know, it's kind of an iterative sort of process that the pins that you create actually interact with one another. So you have to make sure that they all kind of line up at the same time. And you'll see that they get kind of out of sync with respect to one another just because you've got kind of mutually contradictory data involved. And hopefully you don't get too much of that because it does indicate that there's a mismatch between your model and the real world if there's too big of a mismatch. So I can use this null add errors to uh, drive those back down to zero. Yeah, so there's a, you know, it's a little bit hard to see what's happening over there exactly where that right line should be. But anyway, you get uh, this thing lined up and now we can go back to the quad view I'm just using the uh, middle scroll wheel by the way to do all this and now you've got the 3D alignment of the camera in the actual as shot position with respect to this mesh in your particular shot. So, you know, with this kind of shot, it's easy enough to add things in just because it's, uh, you know, a nodal motion, but you don't always know where things are going to go. So, by doing this and using your existing mesh as a reference, you know, now it makes it easier to position new elements that you want to add into the 3D environment in the right locations. Uh, one other note to this, you notice that we're not changing the field of view or any of these scaling numbers on the particular mesh model that we're using. Those are features that the pin can do but aren't, aren't used and apply in the uh, pin the scene case. 
So thanks a lot for watching.